Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is part three of my series of video casts on metabolism. And we're going to start out here looking at what enzymes are and how they do what they do to make reactions happen more quickly. Enzymes are always proteins, and all proteins have a three dimensional shape. Now, enzymes have a three dimensional shape that produces a location on their on the, on the molecule somewhere where a substrate molecule can fit. And if the substrate combines with the enzyme, then something's going to happen to turn the substrate into a product. Enzymes are biological catalysts, and by the word catalyst we mean anything that speeds up a chemical reaction, making it happen at a much higher rate, but is not a reactant in the chemical reaction. So enzymes are recyclable. They're used over and over again to change substrates into products. Uh, all enzymes work best at a certain pH and a certain temperature. Um, all proteins are sensitive to large changes in pH or temperature. And what happens if you heat up an enzyme or cook it, so to speak, you change its three-dimensional shape. And if that enzyme's a protein, it's probably not going to work anymore because the active site has been altered. Uh, same thing with pH. If you put proteins in a powerful acid, you change the shape of the protein, altering the active site, and rendering it useless as a biological catalyst. Um, enzymes are absolutely necessary for metabolism. Uh, there are many things in the human body that if they don't work properly, for example, if you have a metabolic disease, a lot of times these can be traced back to enzymes that are not being built properly because there's a mutation somewhere in the genetic code that codes for that protein. Now, uh, I did it again. Okay, let's, let's watch. Let me get all these little bullets in. Now, but watch what happens to the active site when the substrate fits in. Did you see how the whole enzyme changes shape? Um, this is how scientists believe enzymes function today. It's called the induced fit model. Okay, induced fit. And the idea behind the induced fit is that the substrate is able to fit into the active site because the entire enzyme changes its shape slightly. Now, it may take some energy to cause this enzyme to change shape, and that energy frequently comes from ATP. So this whole thing is probably being powered by the conversion of ATP into ADP. Uh, some enzymes require a phosphate group from ATP to release, this, to release the product and go back to the original shape. If you remember the sodium potassium pump and the function of ATP um, energizing those membrane-bound proteins, it's the exact same idea. Okay, uh, the energy source causes the molecule to change shape and then allows the enzyme to do its job. It's easy to understand how enzymes speed up chemical reactions if you understand a concept called activation energy. Enzymes lower activation energy. And in this graph, we see a um, chemical reaction that is exothermic or spontaneous. It's releasing free energy because the reactants are falling downhill, so to speak, the products. Okay, so reactants are here, uh, products are down here, and because it's downhill, the delta G is negative. All right, so nothing's going to happen until we get up over the hill, so to speak. So we've got to take the reactants uphill this much. The distances here is marked as E sub A. So without an enzyme, the reactants have to be energized up to this amount of energy before they can then fall down, so to speak, to the products. All right, now this is a pretty big jump. So that's a lot of, lot of um, energy that needs to be added to the system. This energy is gonna have to come from somewhere, remember. You don't, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, you can think of the function of an enzyme as analogous to the striking of a match. A match can sit on a table and not burst into flame for decades, but if you rub it hard enough on a rough surface, you can add enough energy to the match head to heat those chemicals up high enough to where they'll start to burn. And once they start to burn, we can then convert that entire match into ashes, carbon dioxide, light, um, all the different things that come out of combustion. So the match head will burn and convert the wood to ash and carbon exergonically. It's a downhill reaction. It's going to release heat and light, but it needs friction to get started. It's not going to do anything just sitting there. Enzymes work by lowering the activation energy. If you'll notice here, with the enzyme, the E sub A is much lower. It's, it's less than half of the uncatalyzed reaction. And because there's less energy required to get it up to that starting point and then before it can fall downhill, 
it's much more likely to take place. So this is how enzymes are actually able to speed up chemical reactions. Now let's look at an example here. Um, this is an enzyme called sucrase. All right, let me get where I can draw on it here. Uh, this purple thing is a sucrase enzyme and it is a digestive enzyme. It's gonna digest a substrate called sucrose. And you'll notice, they make it pretty obvious here, that the sucrase enzyme has an active site that can receive a sucrose molecule. Remember, sucrose is a disaccharide made from a glucose and a fructose bonded together by a glycosidic linkage. All right, so we're gonna allow by induced fit the substrate to fit into the enzyme. And now we have something called the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, it's now ready to go. And because we have to break this bond here, okay, this is going to be a hydrolysis reaction. So we're gonna need some water a water molecule going in here. So a water molecule comes in, um, this bond breaks because it's being held in the right way by the enzyme, because the enzyme is able to stress this, this bond right here and allow the water to get in. And the product of the reaction is going to be one glucose and one fructose. Okay, so this is a great example of how the shape of this active site on a sucrase molecule is able to receive a very specific substrate and cause that substrate to change into a product. In this case, we've got two different products, a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule. I think it's kind of cool to think about this in terms of human digestion. Uh, we have a lot of enzymes working in our digestive tracts to digest all the different components of our food. And it would take over a year to digest a hamburger without enzymes at room temperature, but our bodies don't do that. We digest hamburgers at body temperature, which is about 98.6 degrees Celsius, uh, excuse me, Fahrenheit, with a lot of different enzymes. Enzymes that digest the protein in the bacon. Remember, we got protein in the bacon. We got carbs in the bun. We've got, uh, we can't digest cellulose, but we've got some sugars and thin pectins and things like that in the lettuce, uh, these vegetable products. Uh, we've got lots and lots of lipids in the cheese. We've got more fiber and more things in the onion and the tomato. Okay, you get the idea. There's a lot of things in the hamburger or the cheeseburger here that need to be taken apart by enzymes and each part needs its own enzyme. So we're gonna need um, carbohydrate enzymes, we're gonna need proteases, we're gonna need things that digest sugars, um, lots and lots of um, carbohydrate enzymes, so, and some lipases, some enzymes that digest, digest lipids. So I think you get the idea. Um, not as easy as it looks, but you don't have to think about it because enzymes are always working in your cells to do their job between eight and 12 hours. All right. We will pick up with um, inhibition of enzyme function in the next video cast. I'm going to stop there.